Okay, traders, welcome to this week's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, if you can hear me and you can see my screen, if you could type a Y in the chat box just so I know that uh, we're ready to, uh, to get going here. Good stuff. Okay, so before we jump into today's contents, uh, first and foremost, we need to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, we know that uh, trading any financial instrument it carries an inherent risk. Uh, but more importantly for uh, today's conversation, uh, the views expressed by me today and the charts we look at there, those are my opinions. They're not indicative of or representative of uh, Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for those who are here for the first time today, a brief introduction to myself. Um, like I said, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years <coughs> learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately, day gambling the S&P. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid, uh, some solid and then quite significant gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to basically average down into uh, losing positions, uh, giving back all of my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant uh, six-figure hit on my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching, and sobering experience is an understatement. Uh, I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent track record in trading. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game, researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, extensively back testing and forward testing and developing a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal-orientated, goal uh, financial gains-focused individual to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the market in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you are simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional uh, emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know that if I focus on excellence in execution, my trading edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. And those are the returns you can see on the screen there um, since 2013. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, uh, webinars and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy, development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill, where I provide a daily market outlook and a, a trade of the day, a chart of the day, a technical pattern that I'm watching in the markets. And you can access these uh, through the Tickmill blog, or you can register your email address to have them uh, sent directly to your inbox. My other, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education, for a leading trading education brand called FX Career Swap, 
offering development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those that are interested, I have uh, I've just, you can see on the screen here, we've got uh, the telephone number for the, the trading desk in London. There's also an email here, which uh, you can send an email through to the guys in London and they'll come back to you with more information about what we offer at FX Career Swap. Okay, so that said, let's jump into the charts. Actually, first thing, I want to just check back in with this S&P chart that we, uh, that we talked about last week or that we looked at. Um, this, uh, this trend line that, we, that I highlighted did ultimately get tested and we did get a nice bullish reversal from there and we've seen some follow through and we're consolidating now. So if I jump onto the intraday timeframes, we can see a little bit more clearly where the next opportunity might be. So what I'd be looking for now um, with respect to uh, these equity indexes is uh, we consolidate and potentially pull back uh, to test the essentially the 50% retracement of these, uh, of these moves that we saw off the trend line support. So we have uh, the level on the S&P that I'd be paying attention to is a move back down into the pivot here at... Um, 3750s, watch for uh, bullish reversal patterns there, set long positions, ultimately targeting a move back through the prior highs and up to test trend line resistance towards 3930. At this stage, the, the bullish view on these on the uh, on the S&P would only come into question if we take out this trend line here uh, back towards uh, 3700. So we have a similar scenario with respect to uh, the Dow Jones, and so you can see bullish consolidation. So watch for a break and a close above this trend line as an opportunity to do something on the long side in terms of uh, terms of the Dow here. So we can expect maybe a little bit more back and filling, um, and then looking for a break. Certainly get a retest there of the, the prior highs at thirty one thousand three hundred, and then look for an extension higher. Next target will be up towards thirty two thousand for the uh for dow jones there uh, the dax similar story watch for uh some back and filling here in terms of the dax so had this impulsive move so we can anticipate or reasonably expect even that uh, we could see a retest of this trend line or um on route to let's just bring in the fibs looking at the tracement levels so yeah, something into this 13,600 area and then watch for bullish reversal patterns there to, uh, to set long positions, targeting a move through the prior highs and certainly looking at 14,200 as, uh, as the next reasonable upside objective. A similar story here in the Nikkei 225. Let's just see, we've got this trend line. So we could anticipate here Maybe we have a triangle developing uh, a bullish uh, consolidation pattern. And so we could see a little bit more to the downside here and maybe a test of this third test. And then we get the bullish extension in terms of the Nikkei. So, those, uh, so pay attention to this trend line. This comes in at the moment at uh, 27,800. Watch for bullish reversal patterns in and around here to, uh, to look at long positions. Dollar index. So uh, the dollar has been on a, a bit of a squeeze here higher in terms of uh, recent price action. We've got these two key pivots here, um, 89.92 and 90. 89.92 had a symmetry swing objective, or sorry, an equality objective at 91.45. We've also got the 9140, which is the weekly range resistance. And we're seeing a bit of a pullback here now in terms of the dollar. Um, whilst, we are support, whilst we find support at the 91 level, I'm still looking for a test, or I'd still be looking for a test of this 9177 um, to complete the bigger 
uh, ABC corrected move before then we can be thinking about uh, potential resumption of the, the downtrend in terms of the dollar. Um, what's, uh, what would negate the idea that we test that 9175 area is if we take out this trend line support on a closing basis, then we can anticipate that the correction is complete from this area at the 9145, and then we'd be looking for a retest and a break of the lows at 8923. Let's take a look at uh, gold here, back retesting support. Uh, we're in a range here at the moment in gold, 1875 and uh, 1803. So really what we want to see is we either get a close below the 1803, and if we do, then that's gonna give us a downside target in gold, which uh, using this, these pivots here, would set up a move uh, to the downside in gold down towards um, projected monthly range support at 17.19. And, uh, and that would be the equality objective uh, coming in there in gold. However, um, at the moment, we just, it, it's really, we're in no man's land. So uh, not much, uh, not much interest in gold at the moment. Silver obviously was, uh, Pretty, uh, pretty popular towards the end of last week with respect to uh, this Reddit retail trading crowd, um, but traded into uh, weekly and monthly projected range resistance, and we saw a sharp pullback. Now we've pulled back into um, the midpoint of the, of the prior range here. We just bring in a box. Uh, so if we think about this as our range that we have been trading in, you can see that we've um, what we've actually done. So this is going back to um, beginning of this year. So what we've what we've actually done is we've come straight back into the fifty percent. You can see from the box straight back into the middle. We're also at the uh, monthly projected range support now, and we've got the monthly pivot, and we're at the yearly pivot. Now, if we can hold here um, and actually take out the 27.22 on a closing basis, then there is a chance that we can extend higher again and target a retest of the $30 level and, uh, and potentially higher than that. So it's a key, key test here for silver and one that you should certainly pay attention to, one that I'm gonna be paying attention to um, is for this close back through 27.20 and you very tight in terms of risk reward, you just risk, uh, risk a dollar here in terms of silver in terms you have a protective stop just below these lows and then you'd see if prices can extend back up through the, the 30 dollar level so uh, keep an eye on silver crude oil bullish um we took we achieved the 55 dollar target that i was talked about last week potentially now we can squeeze higher uh, maybe get up into the um the 57 57.30 area, which is the uh, projected daily range resistance. What I'm actually looking for, the area that's of interest to me now, will be any three wave correction back into these prior highs at the 53.80. And we've also got this uh, ascending trend line support in play here. So any bullish reversal patterns from this area would be, uh, would be of interest to me in terms of the long side. And I'm actually looking for a test of $60 as the next upside target in terms of crude oil. Copper, consolidating, uh, held the quality test at the 349 level. What I'd look for now in terms of copper is a break of this descending trend line, get a close through there. It's an opportunity for then copper to extend and certainly retest the prior uh, resistance up towards 373. We've also got monthly uh, range resistance coming in there. So likely to get a bit sticky up there, but certainly close through the pivot here at uh, 359 would uh, give an opportunity on the long side. Bitcoin, uh, after holding the, um, the equality objective, we've seen some erratic trade and we're really just mid range now. So um, it's not particularly exciting. Uh, to me at this at this stage anyway, and I, I really trade this off the daily charts. Um, so it's not something I'd be trading on the four hour chart, uh, but certainly bullish above 28,000, uh, well, let's say 28,700. And I'm looking, the target I've got, the interim target is into the mid 44,000 level. 
Uh, you can see we've got projected weekly range resistance, 43,000 monthly up to 46.58. Uh, so that's where we're at with Bitcoin, dollar yen. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking to, to fade this move in terms of the dollar yen now. I think uh, we've, we've, achieved, we've, we've exceeded the equality objective. So this is our low here and our swing high and our reaction low. You can see we've, we've stalled out here. We're starting to lose a bit of momentum. Um, we've got divergence developing here. I think this next extension through the 80 level in terms of the RSI stochastic, uh, watching for bearish reversal patterns. We've got the yearly pivot at 105.55. We've got projected weekly range resistance 105.70. Um, so I'm looking to I'm looking for any move into this area with bearish reversal patterns to set short positions. And I certainly think we can be looking back into 104.40, uh, 104.20. As, uh, as interim targets in terms of uh, in terms of dollar yen, Swissy, similar story here with the Swissy. We've uh, you can see we've just exceeded the equality objective at 90.06. We're running into daily range resistance 90.30, daily R3 here at 90.37, and then we've got the monthly range resistance just above at 90.50. So again, I've I've initiated a, a position in. Uh, Swissy, and I'd look to add to this on any bearish reversal patterns in this area to uh, to certainly target a retest back down to test the break breakout level here at eighty nine twenty dollar CAD bearish dollar CAD whilst we trade below this trend line. You uh, you remember from last week I talked about how we moved straight into the quality objective and sold off. So whilst we hold below 28, uh, 128.80 and certainly below this trend line, I'm looking for us to extend lower in terms of the dollar CAD, certainly going to move back down into this 126.85 and maybe we resume the downtrend in terms of, uh, terms of dollar CAD. Euro. Looking for the Euro um, versus this swing high now at 121.89. We have an equality objective at 118. 93. So whilst we trade today below the, the daily range resistance at uh, 124.46, watch for a test of this 118.93. This will be a pivotal test for the euro. It's the equality objective. And more often than not, you'll see uh, corrections terminate at this area. And so what we're watching for is bullish reversal patterns here to set, uh, set long positions. Uh, we obviously see a bit of a squeeze here in terms of long. So that's going to wash down some of the weaker hands. And then maybe we can see the, uh, the euro uptrend continue. Euro yen, <clears throat> looking for the euro yen here to get a test into this uh, interim ascending trend line support. We've also got on the daily chart, if I just flip to that, you can see we've got this trend line. Uh, from the lows last May, so that comes in at 125.60. So anything in the euro yen at 125.60 uh, to 126 here um, would be interesting. Got projected uh, daily range support 125.80, uh, daily S3 125.80. So any move into this area with a bullish reversal pattern, I think there's an opportunity to look uh, to get long the euro yen. Certainly look for a retest of 127.20. Euro sterling got uh, got clattered with the uh, the BOE interest rate uh, decision where they did where they're they're exploring negative rates but it doesn't look like they're uh, they're going to be doing anything anytime soon so uh, another leg to the downside here in terms of uh, euro sterling you remember from that weekly chart I'm actually looking for the euro uh, sterling to get a test into the 86 area uh, and I'll be watching that very carefully for uh, for a longer term trade in terms of euro sterling but nothing to do immediately. So let's check in with some of these uh, sterling crosses. I posted this as the chart of the day today. We traded just shy of the trend line. This is a big bullish reversal candle now. And uh, look for this euro, also, uh, sorry, sterling also to take out 180.13 to, uh, to start a more significant move to the upside. Sterling, big reaction here. I was actually looking earlier the, when I was monitoring this chart, looking for a pullback to see if we can get a test of this uh, 135 area. 
looks less likely now. So as uh, if we can get a big daily reversal here, then I think we get this move up into uh, the 139. And then from there, I think we can get a pullback, certainly see 137.50 again. So see where we close on the daily candle. Let's uh, let's pull that up actually and just see if we can go and get, uh, we get a nice outside reversal candle here, pin bar. Uh, I want to see it close through the pivot here, 136.82. Certainly uh, looking, looking bullish now for sterling. Sterling yen is a trade I've got running. Uh, posted this. this is a chart of the day actually today. The uh, Sterling Aussie was a chart hit. So I'm long um, at the moment from, uh, from this uh, 143.55 area. And uh, I'm looking certainly for a test of 144.50. Uh, and then the weekly range resistance, 145, are the, the interim targets I've got for that Sterling yen long position I'm running. Sterling Swiss. Watch, uh, again, I was looking for a test of the trend line. We haven't got it, we're extending here. Watch how we trade up into this 123.50 weekly range resistance, 123.70 is a weekly R3. Uh, and note we've got some momentum divergence here in terms of the psych indicator. So uh, caution into that area uh, in terms of Sterling Swiss. Sterling Kiwi. This is that big inverse head and shoulders pattern that, um, that I referenced. We've seen a, a great reversal there from what could be uh, the right. Uh, so this is this being our left shoulder, this double bottom being our head, this being our right shoulder. So I'm going to pay attention to this Sterling Kiwi, see where we close today. Um, as I might look to add this on the long side. Let's take a look at the daily chart. It'll be a bit clearer for us. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, you can see it more clearly here. So if we can get a nice outside reversal candle, take out the 90.30 on a closing basis, then I'm going to look to to go long Sterling Kiwi, and uh, we can certainly think about testing the uh, weekly range resistance first at the 192 area, then on to monthly range resistance 194.50, and then potentially the yearly pivot that comes back in at the prior highs at, uh, at 197.70. Would, uh, would all be reasonable upside objectives. So uh, pay attention to the close today on, uh, on Sterling Kiwi. The Aussie, looking for, the Aussie is in a complex correction here. And what I'm looking for whilst we trade below 77.03 is the equality objective weekly range support uh, down at 75. And from there I get, uh, I'll be getting bullish again in terms of the Aussie. So. Um, let's see where, let's see how we trade in one, if and when we get a test of the, uh, of the 75 level. Equally, if we can take out this 77 pivot to the upside, then I'd get constructive from those levels as well uh, for higher prices in terms of the Aussie. Ultimately, I'm looking for a test of the 80 handle in terms of, uh, in terms of the Aussie. Uh, Kiwi. A triangle de developing here. I mean, the, this looks like we could get a, a breakout potentially. So if we get a close through um, 77, uh, sorry, 72.30, then, uh, then I'm going to get, so I'm going to be looking to get long the Kiwi and uh, certainly retest the prior highs at 73. And then we can look up towards monthly range resistance at uh, 73.50 will be the, uh, the next upside objective, but need to get, need to take out this 72.30 on a closing basis to, uh, to suggest that this bullish consolidation pattern is completing and we can resume the move to the upside. Kiwi Yen, uh, area of interest for me here is, um, let's just draw this in. And if we bring the retracement tool. So yeah, what I'd be watching for with this, uh, this Kiwi N is any move up into this zone here. So we've got daily range resistance 76.13, daily R3 76.34 and predicted weekly range resistance at 76.35. Watch for bearish reversal patterns there uh, to see a, a short-term exhaustion in terms of the Kiwi Yen and potential certainly to pull back into um, the pivots here, the pivot cluster down towards 74.90. Kiwi Swiss, 
is one I've got running at the moment. Um, what I was looking at is this uh, in a second. So we've got the trend line running here. We, uh, we're looking to get a close back below it, but not at the moment. If, uh, if we take out the monthly range resistance on a closing basis, I'll, I'll cut my position, but um, I'm holding it at the moment. We've got some divergence down here. Um, and we, again, let's see how we trade at the, uh, the monthly range resistance here. We've got daily range resistance just above us. So uh, keeping that Kiwi Swiss on the go at the moment. Kiwi CAD, watch for a potential double top here with weekly range resistance just above 92.59. This could uh, this could be interesting if, um, if we trade up into here and bearish reversal patterns to set short positions looking for a 91.60 would be the objective there. Um, and that is, uh, that's the chart pack for me this week. Um, we're really paying attention to this dollar and uh, and see if we can get uh, see if this this squeeze that we've seen higher this position readjustment um, we'll see the potential for a pullback at a minimum we look for a third test of the ascending trend line and maybe the potential resumption of the of the downtrend in the dollar are there uh, are there any questions you can either type in the chat box or you can uh, raise your hand and I can unmute your mic. Equally, if there aren't any questions. Um, <coughs> Charlie, the lawsuit uh, with Tether, uh, haven't, uh, again, I haven't really, uh, I haven't read much about that. Um, the, the my, my view basically on um, on, on the, these cryptos is that you want if you're going to, if you're looking to get a position going in them then um, Bitcoin is is the primary uh, instrument because there is a derivatives market traded in Chicago um, and that means that institutional players are involved um, equally ethereum I believe they're also launching a derivatives market for that next week in Chicago so we should see a lot more stability in those two than any of the others um, but I haven't uh, haven't read uh, anything about that uh, that lawsuit Charlie ultimately I mean any any regulation uh, is is generally a negative um, but uh, to the, the the degree to which that's implemented I don't know at this stage any other questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is helpful so that uh, I know I can, uh, I can wrap things up here. Okay, good stuff. Thanks very much for your time, everyone. Um, be sure to also to join us um, next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Uh, for a live debate looking at the impact of uh, the global pandemic, the second wave, and where markets are likely to be heading as we head into, uh, into the summer. That's gonna be 3 p.m. UK time. And uh, you, can, uh, you can sign up via the, uh, via the blog, the Ticknell blog, to join us for that. Uh, otherwise, uh, it'll be same time next week. Thanks very much, guys. Hope this helps. <laughs>